Did you know that you can make cheese in your kitchen right at home for less than the cost than it is to buy it at the store? And you can use good quality farm fresh milk. Here's how you do it. Making your cheese at home can be very cost effective. I can buy a gallon of raw milk for $6.50 and it only takes me a half a gallon to make a block of paneer cheese. Paneer cheese is what you'd put in a lot of curries and Indian food. And when you buy this cheese at the store, it can cost up to seven or eight dollars for one block. And so that's one meal that you're using this block of cheese seven or eight dollars. I don't know about you, but I try to keep my family meals under ten dollars. And when the cheese costs eight dollars, you pretty much are over budget. So I can make this same amount of cheese for half the cost of a gallon of milk. So that's about three dollars and twenty-five cents. So today I'm just going to show you how to make a very easy cheese. It's a great one to start with, ricotta cheese. Ricotta, you can put in all types of Italian foods, pastas, baked pastas, lasagna. I love it just right on top. A nice fresh ricotta, it's so delicious. So let's get started. You're gonna need a large enough pan to fit a half a gallon of milk. And the pan should actually be kind of heavy on the bottom. Um, that way the milk doesn't burn really quickly. So first I'm going to need to get my milk and just add a half a gallon to the pan. I'm just going to guesstimate about half the jug. Next I'm going to turn on my heat. I'm going to keep it pretty high but I'm just going to watch it. Um, make sure you don't cover it because it'll tend to boil over faster. And you just have to kind of keep an eye on it, make sure it doesn't boil over. And I'm going to go get my thermometer. So I'll just stick my thermometer right here on the side. It's very important to have a thermometer. That way you know when the milk is hot enough. And you don't want it to overboil or boil over. So next I need to go and prepare my bowl and my colander and my cheesecloth for when I'm ready to pour the milk in. So here I just have my bowl, a colander, and then my cheesecloth will go right over the top. This is where you're gonna pour the cheese through and then the whey will end up in the bottom bowl. So now we're just gonna wait until the temperature of the milk rises to about 185 to 195 degrees. Once the milk reaches the right temperature, you're gonna pour in about an eighth of a cup of apple cider vinegar. And that's what's gonna make the, the milk curdle and turn into cheese. If you wanna see some more cheese recipes, subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. Um, also, leave a note in the comments what type of cheese you'd like to see me make. It looks like our milk is getting to the right temperature. Okay, it looks like everything's the right temperature. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn off the heat and then remove my thermometer. So next I'm just going to add about half of the amount of vinegar to get it started and give it a stir. You should start to see the milk curdle. We'll give that a minute or two. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of my vinegar and give it a quick stir. You can see that there are definitely some cheese curds happening there. Just gonna give it another minute or two. When I first made cheese, and figured out how easy it was, I couldn't believe that I wasn't doing it before. 
There are so many things that you could do at home for a lot less of the cost. It's actually quite easy to do. And when you make things at home, you're going to use better ingredients, less or no preservatives, and it's going to cost a whole lot less. It's, it really just does take a little bit of time. And so it's kind of a trade-off. How, how healthy do you want your family to be? Um, what kinds of ingredients do you want to be putting into your family? And so if that's really important to you, then taking a little bit of time to create your own things, make your own foods, um, is, it's going to be totally worth it. So it looks like we have all of our curds. They're separated away from the whey. And you're looking for that um, transparent kind of yellowish color. And that way you know that it's just the whey that's left over. So let's go ahead and take it over to our cheesecloth and pour it through. Let's go ahead and pour it through carefully. You don't want to burn yourself. Get my spoon, get that last little chunk out. There we go. Ricotta is a very soft and creamy cheese. So you're going to want to just let it drip, let the whey drip out of the cheese instead of pressing it. Other cheeses that are a little more solid, you're going to press them and squeeze that whey out. But this one, you're just going to kind of let it, let it drip. So I learned that the best way to kind of let your ricotta drip is to pull up the edges of the cheesecloth and tie it up and hang it from one of your cabinets so that the whey can just kind of naturally drip out of it. You're not squeezing any of the curds together, you're just kind of letting it drip. And you know that it's done when it stops dripping. So here's what I did, I just kind of tied it up onto my cabinet and then left the bowl underneath it and it's just gonna sit there and drip until it's ready. And it really depends on whether or not you like a more dry ricotta or a more wet ricotta, um, how long you, you leave it dripping. Um, most people say you leave it dripping until it stops dripping, um, but you can pretty much, you can take it down and check it um, and see if it's the consistency that you like. So let's see how it turned out. Looks like it's ready. Okay, look at that. Looks like there's a little bit of whey left, which is great because we're going to stir it in and keep that nice creamy consistency and then this is the stage that you would actually add your um, your salt to the mix so it depends on how salty you like your ricotta I'm just gonna start with about a fourth of a teaspoon of salt and then just kinda stir that in So next I went ahead and added about a fourth of a cup of milk back to it to get it to be the right consistency. So next I'm just using my hand mixer to really just break up those chunks, otherwise it looks a lot more like cottage cheese. I'm just going to add a little squeeze of lemon juice to give it a little bit more flavor. Got a little seed in there. And there you go. It's got a really great texture to it. That's your ricotta cheese. 
So there you have it. It's actually really quite easy. Now you just pop it in the fridge and let it chill for a couple hours and then it's all ready to eat. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you want to see more tutorials like this, um, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up um, and I'll be making more like this in the near future.